and uh, you're listening to Yarra Valley FM 99.1 and today is International Suicide Prevention Day and it is part of our efforts to, pre- um, to, to help prevent this very sad occurrence of suicide. Um, I have with me in the studio Peter Charles Downey, uh, director of the thought-provoking new documentary Surviving Earth, which is uh, basically about mass suicide prevention. And of course, for the, the people listening out there, don't forget you can call in at any time with uh, any questions you may have for Peter about the film. So welcome to the studio, Peter, and uh, thanks for being with us today. Oh, thanks for having me in today, Mark, and hello to everybody listening. So um, I thought Surviving Earth was a fascinating, um, and it's just a fantastic, important environmental and humanitarian film. Um, would mass suicide prevention be a, a correct description? Yeah, basically, uh, Surviving Earth is about trying to prevent uh, the mass suicide of humanity uh, uh, from a human-induced a resource depletion, environments for degradation, and climate change. You know, so to prevent humanity from uh, killing itself by uh, killing our host, uh, the Earth, our mother. Look, climate change is not unstoppable. We are, we're still in that window of opportunity, particularly in this decade, where if we fight hard and re- reduce our dependency on fossil fuels, we have a significant chance of avoiding dangerous climate change. But things are perilously close. Peak oil is certainly as big a problem as climate change, uh, arguably a more urgent problem because uh, most of the impacts of climate change are taking decades to unroll, whereas the impacts of peak oil are happening now. We really have failed to come to grips with the fact that there are going to be limits on what we can can continue to do now. We have now reached the point where those global limits are becoming real. Uh, This was sort of flagged way back in the 1970s with the Club of Rome's Limits to Growth work. Um, The core scenario of that work is actually almost exactly what's happened in the last 40 years. Uh, the problem is that in the next five years, according to that scenario, things start to fall apart because of the sorts of limits we're now seeing. What we have come to depend upon is a non-renewable natural resource. Once it's gone, it's gone. But there's now, at this time, seven billion people that need to be fed, that need to live. That need, and, and what we call industrialization allows so many people to live on the planet and to live in as densely populated cities as we do that uh, the world is overpopulated. I mean, uh, there's just too many of us. You know, Mark, all the people we interviewed uh, sort of all agreed that uh, overpopulation was the elephant in the room uh, that no one wanted to talk about. Uh, I was born in 1930, probably looked like it, Um, and in 1930 there were only 2 billion people on Earth, and today there are 7.1 billion, and if things don't go quite right, we'll be up to 10 billion uh, by the end of this century. And that will just be indescribable, the damage that we will do to the environment if that happens. We're seeing our governments immobilised by the scale of the problems and the challenges that, that humans are now facing. They can't solve these problems. They're like dinosaurs in a tar pit of opinion polls and vested interests. They can't move. What we're starting to see is consensus is forming around key issues around the world and especially young people, are conversing with one another across all the old boundaries that used to divide human beings, across racial boundaries and religious boundaries and ethnic boundaries. We're the next generation to be dealing with this. We have the ability to take a stand. I remember a few years ago, um, Mum and I sat down to watch a movie together, and it was a really old movie. (laughs) It was still in black and white. It was that old. Um, And so we, we sat down to watch it, and one of the actors, said something that I thought was so haunting. He said that children should be seen and not heard. That old one. one. (laughs) And I had to ask my mum what that meant, because in this day and age, I'd never heard of that. And she told me that back then, kids didn't get to have an option or a choice, which I thought was really sad. And so today, as kids, we are in this extremely unique opportunity where we're able to stand up for what we believe in stand up for what we know is right. So we shouldn't just give away that opportunity, let it pass us by. We should act on it. Thank you very much for being a a part of our show today and sharing your thoughts and vision. Yeah, well, Mark, thanks very much for having me on the show and I really hope, you know, the listeners out there gain something from it and you'll get out there and watch Surviving Earth and uh, get to know all the great people that we interviewed.